For me, this is a detective story. I loved detective story from childhood. Daily we are getting new evidence which will allow us to reconstruct what happened here. Dominici in southern Georgia. This medieval citadel was once a vibrant city at the crossroads of Asia and Europe. In 1991, a team of archaeologists led by David Lord Kipanidza made a discovery here that dated back a great deal further than medieval times. In 91, our team found human jaw. It was one of the last days of the excavations, and it was a very big surprise for us. It was very good feelings, definitely. But it was something new, absolutely new. Yes. Me personally, I understood that it's important, but how it's important on this scale, I could not imagine, really. The jaw was perfectly preserved and had been found in a part of the site that was a staggering 1.8 million years old. The age was so important because nobody believed that humans were able to left Africa before one million years old. But Manisi changed these ideas. David Lord Kipanidza found himself in charge of the most talked about archaeological dig in the world but events around him were spiraling out of his control. Georgia had broken away from the Soviet Union, plunging the country into economic and political turmoil. Early 90s were quite difficult time for country. Economically, we had a civil war, and it was time of real collapse of Soviet system. So it was hard for science, very hard. But we were continuing to work. In 1999, Manisi came back on the stage with the new skulls. It was really amazing. This season we had fantastic discoveries, two skulls in the same season. And both the skulls showed that the Manisi hominids are very primitive. And then we published these skulls in Science magazine. We got real international recognition and a lot of fanfares. The skulls caused a sensation. They were far too small to fit with accepted theories about who first left Africa. The first human travelers were thought to be tall, strong, and have large brains, vital to survive outside the African continent. But the owners of the Dominici skulls were far more primitive and had small brains. The human story had to be rewritten. It's early July 2004, and the annual dig is underway. Since 1991, David has sought to share his good fortune with world-renowned experts from abroad who work alongside his Georgian team. Some of them are feeding into the Paleo Lake over there, and some of them to the... Science has no border. Maybe it's a slogan, but it's reality. And when you are sharing, you are stronger. Team is stronger, and Georgian science is integrated in world science. Yeah, that's highly important. No, no, it's a different. David's so team has had great success. Since 1999, two more skulls have been found, along with various jaws and body parts thought to come from six individuals. This has given the team the unprecedented opportunity to study a group of early humans, rather than just one individual. The new arrivals all came from one small pit known as the Champagne Room. This is one of the richest spots in the world. Could you imagine two skulls and three human jaws were found here? So this is amazing. Maybe this is a place for Guinness Book. 
One of Dumanisi's greatest assets is its potential. Only 1% of the site has been excavated so far. Excavations could last for several decades, and raising the money to finance them is no easy task in a country facing serious economic difficulties. Today it's uh, very hard to explain people when they have subsistence problems that countries should fund archaeology, that this is not a parasite work. For Georgia, archaeology, paleontology, it's necessary. This is a science, but at the same time, science is not just for scientists, it's useful. Archaeology will be helpful for country and it will be helpful for economy and it will be helpful for the future generations. But Georgia's greatest treasure is now under serious threat. The climate in South Georgia poses a real hazard to fragile fossils exposed to the elements. Today, a site needs to be protected. You can see it belongs not only to Georgia, it has world meaning. Rolex Award is crucial for us at the moment. Rolex Award will enable us to preserve it and at the same time to continue research and to leave it accessible for public. I don't know. It's, it looks like clavicle, but it needs to clean to see it. Despite the difficulties, the collection of prehistoric human bones is continuing to grow. Yeah, it's cold bone. Mm -hmm. It's a second human bone today. The work of David Lord Kipanidze has won a Rolex Award for Enterprise. The award will help to preserve the site, ensuring that international attention will continue to focus on this quiet corner of Georgia as it rewrites the story of human evolution. This is very exciting to study past where you have not final answers. So in this case, we're lucky that Manisia brings a lot of questions and answers should come. <laughs>